Hi, welcome back to Globe with Shelly. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the powders that I own from least favorite to most favorite so that you, and I'm gonna tell you why they're my least favorite and why they're my most favorite for women over the age of 40, 45 especially. And if you have large pores like me, oily skin especially, this you're gonna love this video because I'm gonna tell you which powders will look good on your textured, mature, fine-lined skin. And trust me guys, I have fine lines. They are there, okay? but I'm gonna show you which powders will not make them stand out and which just might a little. So stay tuned, you're gonna like this. So remember, this channel is all about glowing up, transformative skincare, flawless makeup, and a lifestyle to match. If that resonates with you, hit subscribe. Don't forget to ring the notification bell. I want you to know when I post future videos. Okay, so I'm ranking all of my powders from my least favorite to my most favorite, and I've got a lot of powders here, guys. I like to have options, what can I say? Okay, which ones are my least favorite? Which ones are my most favorite? I've been trying to figure this out. I'm gonna start with, oh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna start with my It Bye Bye Pores. This is a translucent setting powder. It's supposed to cover up, it's supposed to blur pores, cover up fine lines and wrinkles. I find that it's, it's very, very light and powdery and it almost has like just a really soft finish. And I find that even though it does have a mattifying effect, it tends to settle a little bit too much in to my fine lines. It does okay with pores, but it's definitely, you don't get a lot either for the, for the price point. So it's definitely not on the top of my powder list, but if you wanna give this powder a try, it's not a terrible powder. It's not gonna be the best for mature or textured skin, and you don't get a lot of product for the price. Okay, so there's my first powder. Second powder I'm gonna to talk to you about is my Tarte Shape Tape translucent setting powder. This powder tends to be kind of yellow. If you have darker skin, this powder might work for you. Definitely doesn't work for me with the yellow color. I have used a little bit of this. Definitely haven't used the whole, haven't used all of it though. I kind of stopped using it. It just really didn't agree with my skin. It does highlight texture very easily. It looks a little tad cakey on the skin. That being said, there are worse powders out there. The powders that I buy are pretty good powders, all of them, for, you know, more textured skin. Um, some of these powders look great if you have really smooth skin. So if you're someone in your 20s, you don't have a lot of texture, you don't have a lot of pores, um, you could definitely, this is a great powder, especially if you have a little bit darker skin tone. If you have a lighter skin tone, this is not gonna work for you. It's also a little, I find it a little drying. So if you have dry skin, you might not like this powder either. So there you have it, that's number two. Third powder, I really wanted to like this powder. This is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. It's a gorgeous powder. If you're a young person, you don't have much texture, you don't have large pores, this would be a beautiful powder on you. Uh, it just doesn't, it just shows too many pores. For my like, for my liking, I love the color. I think the, it's got kind of almost like a, like a glowy effect, so it's really pretty. I have the color Cupcake. I really, really wanted to like this powder, but like I said, it just doesn't pack much of a punch. It doesn't smooth anything out. It doesn't blur anything. Just not great for more mature skin. So, oh, it's just so hard when you have mature skin to get good powder. Okay, the next powder that I would say ties a little bit with Huda Beauty is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose uh, Setting Powder. This is a really good, I don't know if you can kind of see, this is a really good setting powder. This has a little bit of a luminosity. Um, I have used it under my eyes a couple of times. I find that it just, it's a little too heavy for me. 
Lots of people love Laura Mercier. I find that it settles in my pores again. I think it works for fine lines a little bit better than it does necessarily for pores. When you have large pores, it's really hard to find powders that doesn't powders that don't settle into those pores. So this is just not the powder for me. I have a whole I didn't even really use it. Just didn't didn't really care for it. It wasn't my top powder. I wouldn't just reach for it. So that being said, let's move on to the next powder. This was one of my favorite for years. I loved this powder. Like probably my early 40s, this was my go-to powder. I used this all the time. If I ran out, I freaked out and went to Sephora and bought it. And it is the um, Fenty Pro Filter Powder. And this is, uh, I think the one I have here is the banana powder, but I like the translucent, the kind of white powder. I, and they might call it lilac. I'm not sure. I'll link everything in the description box. I used to use that powder like crazy. This is a great powder. Again, it's a step up from the Huda Beauty and from the Laura Mercier, but it still tends to show a little bit too much pore, a little bit too much fine line. That being said though, younger people, this is definitely a great powder. I could use it in my early 40s and it was gorgeous, but hmm, alas, I've had to move on from my Fenty obsession. So what's the next powder? in my Arsenal O powders. That would be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. This is kind of my backup powder. I do like it. It's a good powder. It does tend to set in my pores a little too much. Fine lines though, it doesn't settle in at all. It's just my pores. So if you have texture, if you have just some fine lines, this is a great powder. It's definitely lightweight. It's, it's it has a beautiful finish, like I said. I love the color. It's totally translucent. It's hard to find powders for skin that's pale, just as I'm sure it's hard to find powders for skin that's dark. So this is a great powder. Powder. I definitely works on my light skin. I don't know if you do have darker skin. Let me know my dark darker skin friends. Do you like this powder? Have you tried it before? I find it to be good. I like the uh, the non color of it, but I don't know how that translates to darker skin tones. Um, I am a paler skin. So that being said, doesn't settle in fine lines, definitely settles in pores. So if you have texture, you're probably not gonna like this powder as much as some of the others that I'm gonna get to. Okay, this powder, these four powders right here are basically runners up. I would use these anytime interchangeably. So let me tell you what they are. So the, I have the Hydra Care Setting Powder by uh, Terry. This was one of my favorite powders. I absolutely love this. Um, it is made with hyaluronic acid. It does not settle in fine lines. It does not settle in pores. It has a beautiful finish, but it's hard to come by, guys. I think they stopped making the translucent one and went to colored powder. I can't use the colors. Um, so if you do have darker skin tone, this powder is available in like light, light medium, medium, medium dark, and dark. Okay, so having said that, if you have darker skin, you could possibly get away with using this powder because, um, and here, let me show you the front of it. That's the, that's the name of it. The, it's uh, By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. So I bought this for many, many years. Uh, I bought this at, I think it was the skin store I would get it. It was $60, but I would use a coupon. So it's a little bit pricier powder. Great, great powder. But when they stop making that color, the translucent um, powder, I just can't use the light. It's too dark for my skin. So too bad because I really did love this powder a lot. Um, and I've had to move on from it, but I've got some powders that are cheaper that are on my top three. So let me show you my top three powders. All of these powders are great powders. They're gonna, 
if you have textured skin, if you have fine lines, if you have any wrinkles, these powders are not gonna settle into your pores. They're not gonna settle into your fine lines. They are gonna give you a nice all over kind of flawless finish. I'm wearing this one that I'm about to show you right now. And it is the NYX Professional Makeup Can't Stop, Won't Stop Setting Powder. This is still one of my favorite powders. It is a very economic goal. <laughs> It is a very low cost powder. It's economical. You're going to love it. It does have a yellow color, so I didn't think I'd be able to wear this, but it's a very soft, light yellow. So it does not show up uh, yellow on my skin, which is great. So perfect, wonderful powder. It doesn't settle into pores. It doesn't settle into fine lines or wrinkles. Um, so it's definitely mature skin approved powder and it comes, it's super cheap guys. And I'm linking all this in the description box. The next two powders are equal in their weight. They are made with talc though. I think the other powders are not, I think the, the powder by Terry has talc in it. And I want to say the, I'll look it up and I'll tell you which ones have talc in them. Some people are really anti-talc. I've done a lot of research into the topic of talc itself and I kind of want to take a minute and talk about that because I think it's super important. So a while back there was an HBO documentary called Not So Pretty and in that documentary they highlight that there are asbestos materials that are commonly found in talc and talc is used in a lot of cosmetic product. And so this asbestos can possibly, you could breathe it in and obviously it can cause things, you know, it can cause problems with your lungs. It can, at the worst case, it can cause mesothelioma, which is a rare type of cancer caused by breathing asbestos. How? Oh, not to scare you though. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not joking. It, it, it really is true. So if the talc is refined, if it's not refined properly, meaning it's done quickly or at a lower cost, you can have some of those, that asbestos still in the talc. Okay, so that is true, right? We know about the Johnson & Johnson issue, talc in the vaginal area, but, okay, so I'm, I'm coming in with a but, understand. That being said, Talc on the skin, okay, won't cause any problems at all, okay? So a lot of the problems with talc actually comes from using it in areas like your genital areas. You know, I hate, <laughs> I'm trying to say this in a really proper way. So if you use it in your genital area, it can get up into uh, your cervix and that's how it gets into your bloodstream. Your face, however, if you don't have an open wound, it's not going to get in there. So the most likely culprit, if you put it on your face, would be breathing it in. You'd have to breathe in a lot of talc in order to get enough asbestos to really cause cause damage to your lungs. So a good practice is making sure that you don't breathe if you are using talc. Most talcs are refined that are in cosmetics and so they don't contain asbestos. I think not so pretty in the documentary, they tested several and they did contain traces of asbestos. I haven't looked at the actual truth behind the documentary. Instead, I just did a lot of research into some of the studies that have been done by the American Cancer Society. And what they found, what the American Cancer Society found was that talc on the skin, even talc containing asbestos doesn't get into the skin. The skin is the largest organ on your body. It's designed to keep things out. The asbestos materials, just like your foundation, is not absorbed into your skin. I don't know how many beauty influencers and um, aestheticians I've heard say this, and yet people will still say it can leach into your skin. No, it's not gonna get into your bloodstream through your skin, it's just not. I don't have a problem using talc, mainly because I've seen study after study that's shown that talc doesn't actually um, leach into the skin so you're fine unless you're using it in your genital area, which is where the Johnson & Johnson lawsuit came from um, because it did get up into the cervix and then it 
it was linked to a, ri a small rise in cancer. So that being said, I don't think talc is quite as harmful as it's being touted. We've used it for that. We've used it for hundreds of years in cosmetics. So I'm not really opposed to talc, but these next two powders do contain talc in them. So I wanted you to be aware. The NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop does not. And the two powders that I really like that do contain talc are the Kim Cheek Kimchi Chic Puff Puff Pass Set and Bake Powder in Translucent. This really looks very flawless on the skin. It sets just like the NYX. I think they're almost identical in the way that they look. So you could go for the NYX, especially if you're opposed to using anything with talc in it. This does contain talc. Keep that in mind. The other one is the No Color White Powder, that white powder by Kimchi Chic and this one is also a beautiful powder if you're looking for a more translucent powder this has a little bit of color this does not this is going to give you a little bit of this one's going to give you a little bit of color this one of course is a completely white translucent powder but they both work just as well as each other and i think are a great tie for this NYX. So if you didn't want to use anything with talc, you can always um, opt for the other powder. I believe the powder by Terry has talc. I'll list all the powders and whether or not they contain talc in the description box. So there you have it. I've ranked my powders from lowest to highest. The winners are NYX, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and the Kimchi Puff Puff Pass. Give these powders a try. If you have other powders that you think work for uh, textured, mature skin with fine lines and wrinkles, let me know in the description box. I'm always looking for something to try. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Globe with Shelly.